Hence the light. Is that bad for you? Good. Okay. We are going to talk about designs within the design. And on a blog, we've used this painting before. It was a background for a major uh, figure painting of Tom Johnson walking through this space in here, a small premier coup uh, done in the Berkshires. Now, I could take my hand like so and move across the piece and move down and move over and move up. Probably I haven't illustrated that very well, but if you get the idea, it gives you an opportunity uh, to look at the shapes within the frame, the first four lines of the picture, as opposed to concentrating on the what it is that's being represented, in this case a landscape, trees and bushes and rocks and so forth and so on, grass. It's a very, very useful thing to do because, of course, you're not going to go into the Metropolitan Museum and turn the Velasquez upside down. Uh, but if you have this in mind as something you can do, it frees you to, to as, a, as a device, to look the way a painter looks at the shapes, do you see? The shapes come first, not the what it is of it, uh, but the shapes. And now, having illustrated this with a small painting, we're going to do it with a large figure painting. So here we have a design. Uh, this is a large painting, and I have uh, put a piece of cardboard down there, and uh, it's like my hand going across, and my hand going across, do you see? Oh, it gives us a straight line, and it makes, to me, a rather pleasing set of, of shapes of color value. And now we're just simply going to move across the painting, and we will go as far at first as this. And lo and behold, we have a head, now clearly a head. And of course, when we're talking about flat shapes on the flat surface, it can get very hard as soon as you begin to see it as a head, to uh, not to see it as flat shapes. In other words, these are all perfectly flat shapes on the canvas, uh, masses of dark and light making again an interesting design, that coming about halfway as it turns out between here and here, the way the shapes uh, work, fighting, if you will, the what it is, the representation of the head and uh, the volume and the mass of the head. So we'll keep going a little bit further. And we have another set of designs uh, working against this how this works in here sets that uh, diagonal up. Just look at how these shapes all work in here as purely abstract shapes. You here have, have what so often happens with the human figure, the kind of the seagull's wing uh, kind of shape you see. And as we go further, we begin to get a different kind of balance of darks. The reds in here, the pattern of repeats in here and here and here and here. All shapes on a flat surface. And don't forget that the painter paints with shapes of color value on a flat surface. Whether the shapes are given volume, as they are in this case, tacto values, as Bernard Behrens would say, or as if they are perfectly uh, flat patterned. They are nonetheless. Uh, shapes for the painter on a flat surface and the observer needs to realize that you're not looking at the thing, you're looking at a painting. So how do you look at the painting? And again, going further, we alter and change the masses again and again and here we've introduced uh, another vertical in here that sets up the arcs in here, the space in here and uh, so forth. We'll go right out to the end and there you have a painting which of course was not intended to be seen as only 
part of a painting, but it was intended to be seen uh, as thus, the painting of the full figure. <clears throat> 